What's up everybody, this is Eddie with MSC and welcome to MSC Live with Kenna Metal, a demonstration designed to deliver on our promise built to make you better. So we're super excited, we got a very, very awesome demo for you today. But before we get rolling, remember this is a live and interactive demo. So we not only encourage, but we anticipate each and every one of you to leave any questions or comments that you may have and leave them in the chat box on this side of the screen. Now do remember, you do need to be logged into your YouTube or your Gmail account in order to take part in the fun. So get logged in, hop on in, and tune in so that you can take part. And you never know, we may be able to take those questions that you put in our chat box, bring them up on the screen, and answer them in real time. And additionally, we're going to be hosting a specific contest today. So for those who are registered and hop in that chat box and take part in the fun, we're going to be giving one lucky winner a Kenna Metal branded swag bag. So make sure you hop on in and get logged in. You could win yourself one of these right here. So we'll thank you for that. Also, following our demonstration, make sure you head on over to MSC and Kenna Metal's YouTube pages. I need you to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell to turn on the notifications so we can keep you in the loop of all the amazing content we're going to be releasing last but certainly not least give us a huge thumbs up so for our demo today we're going to be featuring some Kenna metal tools talking about specific processes but also ramping up your production with these versatile tools and I got a couple of friends with me here today one we've got my master of machines my right-hand man Aaron hey you ready to rock and roll today absolutely Kenna metal always brings some uh, some great tools and uh, we got a lot of guys here that are gonna be able to provide their expertise on what we're gonna be seeing so I'm excited right on and to provide even more value to all of you viewers out there we have not one not two but three industry leading experts from the Kenna metal team to tell us about all the amazing processes and tools we're gonna be seeing demonstrated today. So let's bring in our very first guest, our good friend, Keith. So, hey, Keith, we appreciate you joining us today for the demo. Really excited to hear what you got going on. But before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for the team at Kenna metal. Hey, Keith, you're muted, sir. Why don't you unmute so we can hear you, my man? You're right. Thanks, Eddie. It's good to see you and Aaron again. Uh, thanks for having me on this afternoon. My name's Keith Hoover. I've been with Kenna Metal coming up on six years now. I'm the regional hole finishing and hole making product manager for the Americas. And so I work with everything from drills to fine boring tools to reamers. Well, wonderful. Hey, we appreciate you jumping on and joining us. Really excited to go through the sections you're going to be covering today. And let's move on and bring in our second expert from the Kenna Metal team, our good friend Tony. Hey, Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. You know the drill. Tell us a little bit, a bit, little bit sorry, about yourself and what you do for the team at Kenna Metal. Hey, Eddie. Hey, Aaron. Great to be with you guys again uh, this afternoon. My name is Tony McLean. I'm a regional product manager for Kenna Metal. I cover the indexable milling side of, of our portfolio. I work closely with marketing, do a lot of training, some R&D, field testing, things of that nature, and, of course, customer support as well. So. Well, wonderful. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us. Really excited to cover the tool you're going to be going over today. Last but certainly not least, we're going to bring in our third and final expert from the Kenna Metal team, Steve. Hey, Steve, really appreciate you jumping on the demo today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for the team at Kenna Metal? Yeah, thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Aaron. And thanks, everybody, for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. So I'm Steve Archambault, better known as Steve Arch, or just plain old Arch, and I'm a regional product manager for Kenamental, responsible for solid carbide end mills. I've uh, been with the company 33 years, spent a lot of time in design and application, and in this role I have the pleasure of working with these highly qualified individuals like MSC's metalworking staff and Kenna Metal sales engineers out in the field. So looking forward to this demo today and appreciate you all being here. Well, wonderful. Hey, well, we appreciate you joining us today. And with that being said, we've got everybody introduced. The gang is all here. The stage is set. The spindle is ready. So we're going to turn it over to our master of machines, Aaron. Hey, what are we starting off with today? Yeah, so the first tool we're going to start off with is the Harvey One TE ball nose. Um, and I know we've been able to showcase the Harvey One TE solid end mill uh, previously. Um, so I'm going to have Steve kind of give us a rundown of this particular tool, the ball nose, and what we can expect from this kind of a tool. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, you know, 
some of you might have joined us in the previous call when we demoed the uh, Harvey One TE, which is really the most advanced tool on the market today. And we've added the ball version, which carries with it some of the same unique features in the market, like the faceted uh, eccentric relief, chip gashing in the flutes, uh, asymmetrical flute spacing, variable helix. You know, a lot of these are patented designs that allow this tool to do things that you're probably not used to seeing. Um, and the ball carries with it some additional features, such as that faceted relief carried through the ball, but also a rippled relief uh, behind that ball, which allows for much better coolant flow, uh, reduces heat and friction, which is your number one cause of you know, tool wear and failure. Uh, but there's also some design features in there for stability, like parabolic core, and just, you know, some of the other features built in, as mentioned, asymmetrical flute designs and variable helix. That that all dampens vibration and just makes it that that much better a tool and be much more aggressive. So we're going to demo a few things. Side milling here at 600 surface footage at about two and a half per tooth, um, you know, just cooking along at uh, a depth of cut of 750 with a 300 wide cut. Um, it'll do that all day long. As you can hear, uh, that tool is dead quiet, and that has to do with a lot of, of the design features here. Uh, here we're doing a little trochoidal slot approach. Tool loves that. Um, just will do anything uh, as, as far as tools go. And this tool, by the way, will, will help you increase productivity in a lot of ways, not only because you can increase your speeds, your feeds, uh, but it'll plunge like a drill and it'll ramp at 45 degree angles. So you can eliminate things like entry tools, you know, a solid drill or uh, maybe a modular drill or a high feed mill. You can go right to town with this thing and just, you know, take out that extra tooling. So that's really going to help you increase um, that kind of productivity. Uh, here we're just finishing the slot. You know, you'll see when we get some close-ups what kind of finish that leaves. It's really an incredible finish. And so as we continue to go into the next phase of the demo using this specific tool, why don't you highlight a little bit when it comes to tool deflection? What do you have for us, Steve? Well, I mean, there's multiple things in this design that uh, just eliminate a lot of that deflection. I mentioned the parabolic core, so very open on the end, which allows you to be very aggressive. Uh, you know, deeper cuts than you would normally take, but it adds to that stability. Uh, along with that variable helix and that variable flute spacing, uh, you know, that eliminates uh, the harmonics and the rest and, and reduces that deflection. So it's really some tricks in this cutter that, that make all the difference. You know, that and the advanced coatings, our pre and post coat treatments, um, just, just make this thing I mean, you can't hear that run. I know you guys are out there running tools all day, and I, I can't help to point out it's quiet for a reason, and that's that's that design features that eliminate those harmonics. You know, which is interesting. So you, you mentioned, and actually before we get going, looks like our friend Mac left us a question. So is this a true four flute ball end mill? Steve, tell us how true this is. Well, it is a true four flute ball end mill. Um, no question. Uh, you know, any any ball nose, by the way, is only two flutes to center. You can't run all four flutes to center. So it's true in the center. You tilt it to 15 degrees, 20 degrees, you will take advantage of all four flutes. So in that sense, if I understand the question right, absolutely. Um, and, and the beauty of the design is it doesn't matter what you're cutting. It could be steel. It could be high temp alloy, cast iron hardened steel, you know, this tool excels in all of it. So for 3D uh, contouring, pick milling, coloring, if, if that's your question, this is the go-to tool. You can create some amazing forms with this in a heart. And there we go. One thing I want to notice is we're going to be doing a couple of different things on this piece of material, Steve, but we're, we're seeing some of those chips on the side. Is that what we should expect, or, or is there something different we should be looking at here as we go from application to application? Well, as you can see here, we're taking some pretty aggressive cuts with this. 
we're, we're taking uh, the tool is easily capable of twice the diameter and depth. We we do more than that, uh, but we'd be comfortable and you know based on the machine and the setup, easily two times the diameter and depth. As you can see here, that's that's what we're doing, and because of the chip gashing feature, which is a patented feature, that changes that chip form. You know, it gets it out quicker. It changes it. Uh, in configuration, and it allows the coolant under it, which is why you can be aggressive and why this tool will outlast and outperform just about anything. And this we call the bunny hop. I don't know how many of you out there have ever seen a tool ramp in and out like that at 45 degrees. That That's unheard of. And we're doing it on the side so you can see it, but that'll do that in a blind pocket. I mean, it, it's just amazing that any tool can do that and and this will do true five axis mo motions like that that just will blow you away well very good well now that it lo looks like we've completed that specific block we have a finished one here so we're going to move to our close-up cam and i want you to give us a little insight on the finishes we're seeing as well as the different items as we look at this a little more closely so first well, we got these pock tell us about it yeah i mean as far as finishes you can achieve you know incredibly high quality finishes, you know, low RMS. Uh, and it's all a matter of speeds and feet. But we're being aggressive here, and you can see those finishes. Uh, and especially with that ball nose and doing your 3D milling, you know, that's all a matter of step over and percentages. Uh, but because of that ripple relief design, because of that facet relief, um, you know, it's a sweet spot for every material. And you can get glass finishes with it. I mean, it's really something worth trying is all I can tell you. The metal working team over at MSC and Kenmetal love to come out and test tools, hands-on, document cost savings. Don't hesitate to ask. You know, we, we don't lose often, uh, you know, in a great while, maybe, uh, but not with this tool. It's one of the most successful tools ever launched in the market. You can trust me on this one and don't be afraid to run it. No, it sounds solid. And as we're getting post changer, we're gonna go over to our close-up cam here. We're gonna check out the Harvey tool. Now, we're looking at these here. Let's talk about a couple of the differences between the ball nose and the other Harvey options that we have. So you've got them in um, multiple configurations. You've got the square end, you've got a radius uh, version, you have a neck version with reaches, you know, so you, you can add some stability there, reaching down into deeper pockets or you don't need that extra and you're just reaching. So you got the ball, the square, the radius, the neck. It's an extremely uh, good range of sizes. And, um, you know, you can just pretty much you're going to find what you want on the shelf. It also can be, you know, configured to custom solutions should you not find something on the shelf. We're very good at custom solutions. So... Uh, chances are you will find what you need there, right down to one sixteenth of an inch, and that's a pretty low range, up to one inch. Very good, very good. And as we finish going on to the next section of our demo, one last question we got for you, Steve. Who needs this tool? Well, everybody needs this tool. Uh, like I say, the version of this tool and this design allows it to be used in every material very efficiently, very effectively. So it's that full range. 1018 right up to ink canal and you know you can't go wrong it's it's a one size fits all deal but it's on the high highest end of performance uh and it, it'll match anything out there and, and just just run circles around them um and like i say we love to test we love to document it and don't hesitate to ask we'll, we'll come out there and look at your application and, and help you through it and we will show you you can eliminate tooling and increase your productivity through speeds and feeds, or, or like I say, just eliminating entries. So, you know, really, I mean, uh, I'd like to show you a 3D contouring demo that obviously forms take too long uh, to demo that, but you will be amazed at what this tool can do in a five axis machine. Now, Steve, just because you mentioned that, I know we, uh, we got some B-roll, just because most people that are used to those five axis 3D milling uh, type tool pass, it does take a lot of time, so we didn't want to do that live. But we do have uh, some, some B-roll footage of uh, this particular tool making that kind of tool path. You know, and I know you had talked about some of these other features early on, 
um, kind of give us a rundown on what people can expect with using this tool in those five axis uh, type applications. Well, as you can see, this is a true five axis. The table's moving, the spindle's moving, you know, it's, it's really a, a 3D contouring tool. It should be your first choice. You know, those little extra features, the faceted relief on that ball, along with the rippled relief, which allows more coolant into it, um, which, like I say, friction and heat is number one when it comes to tool wear. Those little extra features uh, just make this tool that much more capable, lasts longer, improved finishes. Um, it, it's really a tool that can do just about anything. It's, it's so versatile in the four flute. You can be aggressive with it, but yeah, you can create these forms and make some incredible finishes. And again, I got to point out that 45 degree ramping. Um, you probably have never seen that before, unless you're using the Harvey One TE now. So I appreciate you pulling that up. It's worth a look. Hey, we like to see things happen live at the spindle, but also showcase really how dynamic and versatile this specific tool is. So we appreciate all of your insight. We'll get you a quick recap at the end of the demo. Before we go to our next segment, everybody remember that chat box will be open the entire event. So just like Mac, put those questions in there. We'll pull them up. And it looks like Don is following suit. So we appreciate you, Don, for your question. What is the cobalt content? Steve, looks like you got one more before we let you loose, sir. Well, these are uh, proprietary grade of carbide made by Ken Metal. It's S105. It's the, uh, you know, probably, I'm sure it's the best carbide grade out in the market today. It's in the 10% cobalt range. Uh, we don't give away too many secrets on this. This is a grade that is approved by, you know, companies like Boeing, Pratt, GE. Uh, and, those, you know, that's hard to do to get a grade approved these days in companies like that, but this is the best grade of carbide out there and it's one of its advantages. Well, very good, very good. Well, hey, we appreciate it. Hey, and as Don said, follow and suit, get those questions in and you never know, you will or could be picked to be one of our winners for the Kenna Metal branded swag bag. So we've got that demonstration completed. Thank you so much, Steve. Aaron, what is next? Yeah, so we're gonna move on to our, our next demo and the tool that we're gonna be focusing on is the Kentep FS. And we have two different types of inserts uh, that we're going to run. We're going to have a, a piece of 1018 and a piece of 4140. We're going to stack them together. We're going to drill some holes. And then uh, I'm going to, while the tool is still in the spindle, I'm going to use this uh, change out tool and we're going to flip inserts to the, the second uh, insert that we're going to showcase. And I'll drill some more holes. Uh, but Keith, if you want to come on in and uh, talk about this first insert and, and the Kintip FS modular system in general, what are, we, what are we looking at here? Yeah, I can do that. So the Kentip FS is the next generation of our front clamping modular drill platform. It's Kentip Fusion. It's supposed to be the perfect fusion of a solid carbide drill and a modular drill. So what we've got here is an upgrade that has created a fully circumferential carbide front clamping insert. And so we have no more steel tool body up where the chip is being formed. It drastically reduces wear on the tool body and improves chip flow. Uh, we've got tons of options for these tools, different geometries for different materials. And like Aaron said, the front clamping capability of this tool enables you to change out inserts on the spindle, in the machine. You don't have to change out the tool offline. Uh, it makes it really handy. Now the first insert that we're going to start with, I, I got the tool ready to go, I got the part in there, is the HPG insert. So give us a, a little bit of insight on what this insert is capable of and how people can use it in their shops. Yeah, the HPG is the high performance general purpose insert. This geometry, this grade of carbide and the coating, all of that is really specific for the highest material removal rates in steels. And to demonstrate how versatile this tip is we're running it in a couple different steels so the first steel is that mild carbon steel 1018 it's going to be like a p1 material and then right below it we've got the 4140 alloy steel it's going to be a little bit harder higher tensile strength and that's going to be uh, like a p4 material p3 material 
And so we're trying to show just how versatile this drill can be. And we're showing that it's running at six thousandths of rev through both of these materials. This was kind of a, uh, a happy, happy ground for both materials. But this drill is really capable of, of pushing upwards of 17 thousandths per revolution in order to maximize that penetration rate in some higher productivity environments. Well, very good. So we're seeing the results in 1018 as well as 4140, and we'll talk and get a little bit of a closer look on that. What results will we be able to see potentially in stainless, let's say? This is not our first choice for stainless steels, and a lot of that has to do with the strength required in this insert to reach our maximum material removal rates. It comes from having a solid insert. There are options to have through coolant inserts for the HPG, but what that results in is a slightly less stiff insert, and we need to consider reducing feed rates. You do this when you have to have optimized chip evacuation and deeper holes, but in stainless, you really have to have the coolant flow to the cutting edge to prevent work hardening, and so we have a different geometry for stainless steels. Okay, no, hey, makes sense. And what type of regrinding would be needed when you're using this in various applications? We don't regrind the Kintip FS. They are meant to be disposable to optimize the throughput in your, in your shop, to optimize how easy it is to utilize this tool. So it's a one and done type deal. Very good, very good. And then uh, it looks like we have a question from Michael Orlando, right on. Well, hey, Mike, we appreciate you joining us today and for your question. Mike needs to know, what are the size ranges? That's a great question. The Kentip FS ranges in size from 6 to 26 millimeters, so about a quarter inch to just over an inch. Very good. Hey, no solid question, Mike. We appreciate your answer. We have another one from my man, Todd. So, Todd, thank you so much for joining us in that chat box. Todd wants to know, is this drill available in industry standard tube sheet sizes? Keith, what do you have, sir? Yes, another fantastic question. The tube sheet industry is something that I've been trying to put a little bit of focus on. And there was one size that we had previously established a, a gap in, and we are providing that um, that drill and the standard tube sheet sizes. Well, very good, very good. As we say, as keep the questions flowing. These are good things. Keith, you have one more thing to add to that? Yeah, speaking about the tube sheet industry, these shanks are available in straight cylindrical shanks and uh, straight shank flanged with a clamping flat. Uh, so there are options for different shank options if, if you're doing a hydraulic holder or Weldon type tool holder. Very good, very good. Thank you for that additional insight. It looks like we're done with this specific HPG. Aaron, what's next, sir? Yeah, so if you guys were able to see, I stood right at the spindle, um, was able to take this change out tool, and I took the HPG insert out, inserted the, the second insert that we're gonna talk about here. Keith, give us a rundown on the FEG insert, and what can we expect? The FEG is the flat bottom E-point general purpose flat bottom modular drill. And so what we see here is a true 180 degree flat bottom drill with a 140 degree centering point that's the e point and so and this this insert also has four margins as opposed to the hpg where we're trying to minimize friction uh, which only has two so this feg is going to be one of our more stable or most stable and more versatile inserts and what we're going to see in this demonstration is that, again, we're running at about six thousandths per rev. Uh, this, this insert isn't optimized for material removal rate like the HPG is. It's more optimized for stability. And as such, we're going to see slightly reduced feed rates, uh, but we can be pushing this upwards of nine or ten thousandths of revolution. And now to demonstrate the stability, what Aaron's doing right now is he's doing an 80% step over. So he's going to be drilling off the side of the part. And we can see it breaking through the side here with only barely the center point engaged. And so we're drilling off the side of the part. And this is to help demonstrate how stable this drill is through impurities in the material that might cause the drill to walk 
through cross holes and other features that might cause some kind of deflection and stability. No, absolutely. Now, you mentioned something when we first started describing this insert. You talked about flat bottom. And for those individuals who may not be as familiar with flat bottom technology, can you give us just a quick little blurb on what that is so we can have a better understanding and how it relates to this specific tool before we look at our finished parts? Yes, this is a, a true 180 degree flat bottom there with the exception of the centering point. And so what that's going to allow us to do is create flat bottom features, definitely, like counter bores and other features where you have to have a, a flat in the bottom. This would be a good option. Um, well, until you invest in the Harvey One, this is a good option to core out pocket, pockets that you want to have a flat bottom in. Um, but this also really helps you with inclined entry and inclined exit. The flatter you make that tip, the less radial forces you have on your drill as you enter into an inclined surface, and the more straight you can be upon entry. The four margins help with stability upon exit into an uneven surface. Hey, no, makes sense. And so what we'll do next while Aaron's switching parts out, we have two of these finished parts we just saw happen. So let's get a quick and close look. Like, see here, like, you want to describe a little bit? We talked about cutting off the edge here. So tell us a little bit about this, Keith. Yeah, we're seeing really nice surface finish there in that hole. We're seeing very minimal deflection, no chatter. This is a great example of what this drill can be capable of. Both of these tools drilled through two different types of steel with varying degrees of chip formation, hardness, and tensile strength. Um, the FEG is, is a first choice for a lot of the ferrous metals. Um, and like I said, there are through coolant options as simple specials, so we can apply these in stainlesses. But then we have other geometries for non-ferrous metals and, and even some composite materials now. Well, very good. Not only were we were able to see it perform at the spindle, but to see those finished parts really, really paints a great picture. And speaking of great things, Robert, hey, appreciate you, Rob, jumping on that chat box here. Rob needs to know, how well does it perform on angular or radial surfaces? Keith, what do you have for us, my man? It performs really well on uneven surfaces. Uh, depending on the size of the radius um, will, and how far off of center you are will determine its performance. The, HP, um, the FEG, I'm sorry, largely finds its, its maximum for incline somewhere between uh, 10 and 15 degrees. And that also depends on stick out length. So the stubbier drill is, the higher you can go in that range but generally try to stick to no more than a 15 degree incline. So, um, you know, whatever that figures out to be with your specific radius or your forging or your casting. Well, good deal. It looks like we have one more question we're gonna pull up and as we pull this up, let's go to our showcase cam here to get a quick HD view of everything we're looking at. So, looks like Lewis, hey, thank you so much. His question is, how is this drill, how is this drill in San, or how does it drill different? Can you go back to the original comment? Different than Sandvik's Coro Drill 870. Keith, can you speak to that a little bit, man, as we're looking at the, what we're talking about right here? I can. So this is a um, fully circumferential solid carbide insert. It's front clamping. Um, the Coro Drill 870, let's see here, is... Um, should be should be front clamping as well but the insert isn't quite as wide it's not fully circumferential carbide there are wings if you will that help hold it into its pocket seat so what we see here is what we should be seeing is some improved stiffness and improved body life because we're not having problems with wear but also, when we get into our four mar margin versions of these inserts, we have a wider swath of area for our four margins to span across, which means we should be able to span larger cross holes and interrupted features like that. 
Well, very good. Well, hey, we appreciate you. Take a little bit of time. Almost got you there for a second, but Keith is on top of it. Thank you for being one of our experts. So as we finish up with those two types of inserts, we're going to roll on to our next demo. Aaron, what's next for us today? Yeah, so the next thing, uh, we've got another block of material in there, and the next tool that we're going to talk about is the Mill 415. Um, I know we're going to bring in Tony here to talk about it. Tony, I know this Mill 415 is not uh, a new product as far as the cutter itself, but what's different about the inserts that we're going to be showcasing here? Hey, Aaron, great question. Yeah, the Mill 415's been around for a little while, and, and I'm sure a lot of people's used it in the shop, and we'll get into some of the details of, of how this tool performs. Um, but what's different is recently, back in April, we came out with what you see there is the SGE R. So you can tell the topography is always stamped on top of the insert, so it's easy to look at. And the R denotes, denotes that it's basically a ramping insert, so you don't get it confused with your other inserts because you wouldn't want to ramp with a standard insert that is not capable of ramping. So it's the new ramping capability that we have now have for this tool. Well, very good. So now we know a little bit about the tool. Aaron, what are we going to be doing with this today? Yeah, so the first thing we're going to do, um, this side, we're going to ramp uh, from one side of the block to the other at a 1.3 degree angle. Let's see if we can get a close up here. And then we're going to come in and, and uh, ramp helix bore this, this uh, bore here. And then we're going to do a, a straight ramp slot here on the side here. So I'll get the, uh, the spindle running here. Tony, kind of give us a rundown of what we're seeing and what we can expect with this tool. Absolutely. So one of the caveats with this tool that it's known for is, is kind of what we call a stepless solution. And it's a true 90 degree shoulder mill that does have a integrated wiper facet built into the insert. So it provides excellent surface finish on the walls and on the floor. So there you just seen it ramp down which previously with the standard inserts that does not have ramping capabilities, you wouldn't have been able to do that. Well, I just heard you say something Here. pretty interesting there, Tony. You said stepless solution. Now, for those of us, maybe myself or the viewers who aren't as familiar with it, what is a stepless solution and why would you consider this specific tool true stepless solution? Well, when we think about 90 degree shoulder mills and, and typically, as you just seen in the first cut, it, it's up against the wall there. Typically, we may make several passes along that face at different depths. And as we move down in different depths, it leaves a step or some people call it a cusp. So if you ran your finger across it, you could feel the different bumps at each pass at a different depth. So with the Mill 415, it's what we call a stepless solution. So basically for the best in class, what we call best in class stepless solutions, about 305,000 are right below the center line of the screw. Maximum depth of cut is 610,000. So you're able to take a very high depth of cut and still make multiple passes and not have those steps. If you ran your finger or a uh, a caliper up against it, you would see it's truly flat, no steps whatsoever. Indicator is what I was thinking about there. Run an indicator up it, it'll be very smooth and what we call stepless. Very good. Makes a lot more sense here. So we're seeing it get through two of the three applications we're going to be specifically be shown with this tool. Now, one thing as, as we get into that next part, Tony, is does this tool actually remove the need for a finish end mill? Hey, great question. So, you know, we think about ramping up production and how we can be more efficient, and that would be to eliminate tools uh, in our arsenal and reduce tool changes and things. So, in a lot of cases, you can utilize this tool when you're when you're building those true 90 degree shoulder mills, and you could reduce the need for, let's say, a secondary finish operation where you'd come back and clean the walls up with, let's say, a solid carbide end mill. So, in a lot of cases, you can eliminate a secondary. No, it sounds interesting nonetheless to be able to have that. And then, so for all of those viewers who are watching right now, let's, let's really get down to the nitty gritty of who needs this tool. Well, I think anybody who does any kind of 90 degree shoulder mills, you know, this, this one has four edges on it. So four indexes, uh, a lot of 90 degree typical, I call them typical shoulder mills only have two. They're single sided. This is double sided. So there's kind of the, the wow moment that this is a double sided uh, four index insert with ramping capability. So anybody who's doing any kind of face milling, shoulder milling, milling, pocketing, helical interpolation, uh, this would be an excellent tool to use. 
again, it has an integrated wiper facet, so it provides a superior floor finish. I mean, like a mirror finish, basically. So it's really a great tool to utilize in your shop and in your arsenal. No, very much so. We're looking at the different types of chips that we're seeing, a little bit of build up there in that larger hit, but no, it's looking great. And then, so with that, it seems as if that's the final operation. Let's get one more good close finish here. Wanna see what this is looking like. So we get our close up cam here. So just give us one. We're talking about this ramp here. What are we looking at? How are we seeing it? What do we need to know? Absolutely. So typical with just a the regular, I say regular or standard mil 415, uh, you would not be able to have that ramp. You can see there it's it's pretty significant ramp. So that's what the SGER inserts, the ramping inserts allow you to do. So typically you would have had to use maybe a different 90 degree shoulder tool or maybe a solid carbide end mill or something to provide that ramp. The same thing with the hole to be able to go in and helical from solid and make a hole like that. And you can see this pure finish down in the bottom and on the wall. And as well as being able to stamp, uh, step over and then just do that ramping back and forth. So it really adds to the flexibility of this tool with the new ramping inserts and, and adds to your arsenal of tools. And hopefully at the end of the day, it eliminates a tool. You don't have to come back in with like a solid carbide end mill or something. You can use this tool and, and finish your entire operation. There we go, a true stepless solution. Not only replaces tools, but adds capability. Another way that we're ramping up production with versatile tools in the mill 415 is just another amazing example of that. So we appreciate you, Tony, with your insight on this specific demo. So for everybody, this is one of your last chances to jump in that chat box to answer any questions that we may have. And soon we'll be announcing our winner of the Kenna Metal branded swag bag. So as we finish up our chip making portion of the demo, we're gonna bring each expert on individually and end things off with our machinist opinion. So to start us off at our round table, we're gonna bring Steve right back on up. So Steve, hey, as we get you for our last final comments, what are the final things that we, the viewers, need to know about the Harvey One tool? Well, this really is a game changer out there on the market. It's, it's really got the competition worried for a lot of reasons. It, it has features on it um, that are unique in the industry that make it possible to do things that you would not normally think you could do with an end mill. It's it's versatile in the sense that it's a true, you know, it's a four flute end mill uh, that is capable of just about any operation you want to do. It fits every material. It reduces deflection and increases stability. It adds, uh, you know, less friction based on its design. Um, there's more patents than I can mention here on this tool. So. You know, what I would tell you is this. I mean, demos are nice, and, and my trying to convince you is nice. But you got some of the best metalworking specialists in the world out there at MSC and in the Kettle Metal staff especially as well. Bring us out there and let us show you the difference. Um, you know, the proof is on the spindle, and we'll stand there and prove it to you. I mean, so that's the trick is, you know, you don't have to believe me. See it for yourself. Don't hesitate to ask us to come in and look at what you're doing. There we go. Combining the expertise of the MSC metalworking specialist with the highly engineered products from Kenamel is awesome. And looks like our man Daryl Freeman, hey, we appreciate you and your question. He says, how well will this perform in super alloys? Hey, I'm sure you're probably stoked to answer this one, Steve. Yeah, I am. I mean, this thing really excels in the super alloys, you know. And, you know, I mentioned it at the beginning, you know, it doesn't matter 1018 up to Inconel, Wasp alloys, Hastaloys especially in titanium. Um, I, I'm someone who niches into the aerospace world with applications. And this thing just blows me away after all these years, 33 years, this is the first time in a long time I've been impressed with the capabilities of the tool. It, it's that unique. So yeah, super alloy is absolutely a go-to tool, you know, especially for roughing or, you know, semi-roughing, finishing, it really doesn't matter. Um, but it's a good question, and yeah, I mean, this thing really, really, you know, it's sweet spot in those materials for sure. Wonderful, wonderful answer to a very good question as well. So, hey, we appreciate all that you've brought to this demo today. Thank you so much, Steve. And so we're going to move on to our second industry-leading expert in Keith. So let's bring Keith right back up. Hey, Keith, you know the drill, man. Let's give our final comments on not only applications, but the tools and the capability that we saw today and that you guided us through. What do you have for us? 
Yeah, uh, I would like to reiterate some of the features about the the Kentip FS that are leading the charge for modular drills, and that's the fully circumferential carbide tip. So when a chip is generated, it comes down, the cutting edge comes down the rake face, and it curls into the chip or the flute form, and it uses that entire flute form to generate the curl and the spiral. And so when you have... Um, when you have an insert that's not fully carbide, it comes up and it starts to wash out against the back side of the steel on the next flute over. And it'll wash that out. And we have super highly polished flutes. If you could show that, that drill one more time, you can see just how polished it is. And that's really gonna help with chip evacuation. We have a wide range of inserts for this platform and we can tackle just about any material that you're gonna come across. And if you need something to just throw in and and try to pop some holes, the FEG and the HPG are two great inserts to start with. They're gonna get yeah. the job done for you. Well, absolutely, absolutely. It looks like we have a question in the queue we're gonna be pulling up here in one moment. Good deal. Hey, Stefan, appreciate you and your question. His question is, do you need a different body for each tip size? What do you have for us, Keith? In general, yes. There are uh, segments of sizes that you need a different body for. So one body will cover, I would say, a smaller range of diameters, um, but it will still cover a range of diameters. Very good, very good. Well, hey, well, if that concludes all of our questions, hey, we thank you so much, Keith, for all of your insight. And we're going to bring in our third and final expert, our friend, Tony. So, Tony, hey, again, we appreciate you for all of your insight. You know the drill, man. Give us the roundabout last final comments on the MIL 415 and what we saw today at the spindle. Absolutely. So when we think about the MIL 415 for the customers out there, the end users that already have one, uh, this is just a standard plug and play with the SGER insert, so there's no modifications to the body. You don't need to get a different body or any of that kind of stuff. And again, the inserts are denated, denoted by an R on the insert, so you can keep the inserts or just you can look at them and tell you to keep them separate from the other ones, so you don't have to worry about somebody missing up and, and trying to run a different insert that won't ramp. So, you know, you got that information right there on the top of the insert. This covers all material groups from non-ferrous all the way up to high temp alloys in the mill four and uh, modular screw on all the way up to six inch diameter shell mill. So it definitely gives you that flexibility in your shop to utilize this tool and the range of inserts for the different operations and materials you may be machining. Very good, very good. And as we do a quick one last shot of our showcase here so we can see all these tools, Tony, tell us where can we get more information on all of these beautiful tools as well as the other amazing offerings that Kenna Metal brings to the market. Where can we look? Absolutely. You can go to kennametal.com. We have landing pages on our home website that covers all the tools that you've seen here today, as well as MSC's website and their better MRO page. So you can get all the information as well from the MSC website. And of course, don't hesitate to reach out to your, your MSC metalworking specialist or as well as any of us that that had the pleasure of uh, showing you some of our tools today. Oh, good deal. Hey, well, we thank you so much for pointing us in the right direction. And last, but certainly not least, we're gonna get insight from the machinist himself. So you got to use all these tools, witness everything, do the testing. Give us some of your insight on the tools that we saw today. Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks to, to all the three experts that were able to join us, uh, giving me some insight, um, a little bit, bit of expertise before I even got into starting to make some chips. Um, but, you know, anybody who has any experience with the Harvey 1TE uh, solid end mill is not going to be um, surprised by the capabilities of the ball nose. Um, I, I was super impressed. Uh, finishes were great. Um, and then the, moving on to the Kintip FS drill, um, being able to just take that tip, you know, simply unscrew it right from the spindle, put the new insert back in, keep rolling. Um, it definitely is going to be able to keep your production high in your shop. Um, but the mill 415 was probably one of my favorites just because, you know, we, we have other uh, indexable mills here in the shop. And, and typically that, that shoulder mill is not something that you're going to ramp with. So being able to have that capability to ramp with that tool um, and it also uh, provide a lot of great finishes with that tool as well. Um, it, it was awesome. Um, so again, thanks to the Kinemetal team for um, kind of giving me some insight and let me play around with uh, some really, really great tools. There you go. An emphasis on 
awesome. Say we appreciate your raw, real perspective on all the tools we've seen. We know that the, the team over at Kenemo, they're not biased by any means, they're just experts, but having a real machinist give us his experience adds an immense amount of value, and that's exactly what we're here to do. So as we end things up, you've all been waiting for, we're now going to be announcing the winner. You hopped in that chat box, asked amazing questions. So let's reveal our winner of our Kenna Metal swag bag package. Looks like congratulations to Michael James. Hey, thank you so much, Michael, for not only joining us today, but also hopping in that chat box. And so somebody from the MSC team will be in touch with you here shortly to make sure that we can get you hooked up with your Kenamental branded swag bag. And also, just in case we didn't answer any of your questions, don't worry, a member from the MSC team will be reaching out to get you all the information that you were looking for. But besides that, make sure following this demo as we wrap things up, you head on over to MSC and Kenna Metal's YouTube pages. I need you to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell to turn on the notifications, and last but certainly not least, give us a huge thumbs up. So we appreciate all of you and the experts. Appreciate you, Aaron, and all of you for joining us for MSC Live with Kenna Metal, a demonstration designed to deliver on our promise, built to make you better.